our information, it's, it, it's fragile. We believe that it's there forever, but that's not true. A hard drive is made for only short-term storage of information. It decays. How can we preserve our information today for the next millennia? DNA is really the ultimate molecule. It holds the secret of life for all living things. At the end of 2012, two groups showed you can take a megabyte of information, translate it into DNA, and read it back again. But both of them didn't look at the stability, and information is only useful if it's stable. DNA decays by reaction with water and oxygen. If you can protect it, it's much more stable. And that's more or less where we come to the idea of the fossil, because in ancient fossil, we know DNA is extremely stable. We use glass, let's say silica, because uh, glass is a very stable material, so we could hack the DNA inside of these small glass capsules. My goal was to show that encapsulated DNA is the best way you can store information. The problem is that if we have one error, we lose the information. I needed somebody knowledgeable of computers to help me, so I've been in the Rowing Club in Zurich for 15 years or so. That's where I met Reinhardt. What I brought to the collaboration was this idea of using error correction codes. I was quite surprised that nobody used error correction codes in the context of DNA data storage because this is a very obvious thing to do. The method is basically overexpressing mathematical information. You add some redundancy, so if you lose part of your information, you can recover it. We put two concepts together. One is really a chemical concept to encapsulate DNA into glass, and the second is a concept that comes from a completely different world, error correction. We choose a book we want to store in DNA, and Reinhardt then uh, translates it to get a computer file. We synthesize the DNA, and we encapsulate the DNA in glass fossils. We then test the stability of the DNA, so we put it in ovens, or we expose it to between 500,000 years and 1 million years of cold storage. And if we did everything right, we can get the information back perfectly. So I put quite a large fraction of my time into something rather crazy with somebody else. To see that it works is, is an enormous step. Yeah, that was really nice, actually, when it worked for the first time, because we spent so much so much effort and so much time, and you never know whether this is going to work or not. Only by combining our two ideas, we could really preserve information for such long times. I see my job is to prove that we can store it for a very long time. The next question is much, much more difficult. What, what do I store? You can put probably the whole of Facebook plus all of Wikipedia, all of that into a small test tube. As humans, we'll always be interested in reading our own biological information. And as long as we can read biological information, we'll also be able to read anything else stored in DNA.